Hi there, I'm Arielle Free. And I'm George Lawton, and welcome back to All Round Mine, the podcast where we pop round some VIPs' pads uh, and take all of you along with us as our very own VIPs. Today, we are welcoming a wonderful human being who's not only a YouTube gaming sensation, she's a national radio host and a football presenter. She's breaking barriers and changing the game for a whole new generation of women in sports and gaming. It's Els the Witch. Ooh. Hey, Els. I love that introduction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always get awkward when people are being nice about me, so I'm kind of just sat there like, oh my God. <laughs> are you ready for us to go all around yours? I'm very ready. Let's do it. Let's, Let's go all around it. yours. So this is my living room slash office because I tried to fit everything in one, one room. Um, I built this computer myself when I first started my YouTube channel. I basically learned from watching YouTube tutorials. So it still works to this day, which I'm proud of. And then I have a lot of my gaming memorabilia. That's Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. It's my second favorite game ever. And I have all of these sort of ornament things. That is a plaque saying I got 15 million views on YouTube. I've got a little Jessica Rabbit like I don't know it's an ornament I guess um and then loads of different sport things because I love sports and then we have the opposite direction which is my tv setup I've got Tomb Raider 2 which is one of my favorite games as well I've got my tv here and then I have my old console so we've got my PlayStation 2 the Nintendo 64 and then the newer one so PlayStation 5 Xbox Series X and a VR device as well um so yeah this is my living room we've got a sofa there uh, on Instagram, people get angry at me because I sit really close to the TV. But if you see how small that room is, there is no other place for me to sit. Then I have my 100,000 subscriber YouTube plaque. I basically have memorabilia of all my achievements around my flat, which some people say is narcissistic. But I quite like to just look up and appreciate everything that I've achieved so far. And these are some of my games that I have in my drawers. So that is the VR headset. We've got some of my Nintendo 64 games, Xbox controllers. Basically, my flat is just a hub for gaming, which I love because I'm the only one that lives there. So these are all my controllers. I don't know why I have so many and I don't use all of them, but they're all in there. And then we've got some iconic games. They have the Simpsons hit and run there, which is one of my favorite games still to this day. So that is my home tour. Amazing. Thank what a tour. <laughs> I mean, you said it yourself. That is a, a lot of gaming tech right there. Yes, it is. And do you know what the ironic thing is? At the moment, I'm so busy, I don't even have time to game. So it's kind oh, of just no. all sat in my flat, but I love it. I mean, we've not really had anyone on our podcast yet who has that kind of tech knowledge and the gaming expertise that you do. Mm -hmm. So it's like almost like, I feel like we need like a breakdown because you said you built that computer yourself. Is that like the setup so you can, what, film yourself whilst playing the games? Is that it? Yeah, so basically when I... I had a job, full-time job. I used to work in computing. So my background's kind of, that's what my degree's in and things like right. that. So I'm naturally quite good at technology. So when I quit my job and I was going to start YouTube, it's very expensive to buy like a big gaming PC where you can edit. So I needed a good one. It's very much cheaper if you buy all the components yourself and then build it. So I was like, okay, so it's a challenge. So uh, my friend did help me with the initial sort of building. And when I say building, you know, inside of a PC, you have all the motherboard yeah. and the wires and stuff like that so I basically spent two days building the computer my my second YouTube video ever is me building this computer and half the video is me having a breakdown <laughs> <laughs> what I'm doing I mean the case didn't arrive and everything but that's so oh, impressive goodness. it still works it's been like three and a half years nearly and it still works and the sense so. of accomplishment from actually yeah. building something yourself and then using it on a day-to-day -day basis must be amazing exactly and now I, I I have been too scared to open it to change <laughs> anything but I'm just proud that I did that but it's not blown up yet it hasn't blown up yet <laughs> but now you've said that yes. yeah you just jinx it. It. <laughs> well done and you've got the perfect sort of relaxation space in there as well for for your gaming sessions where you've got your crushed velvet uh, sofa yep. and everything to sit down do you often invite people around and just get some games on? I do. My friends come round. I think they mainly come round to play the old games because I don't think many people still have sort of those old consoles. So yeah. when they come round, they're like, let's get on the Nintendo 64. This is a bit of a museum that you've got. I know. There, really. yeah. It literally is. Yeah. But it's good. I like it. Um, as I said, I'm the only one that lives there. So I get creative freedom around yeah. my whole flat mm -hmm. and one of the things when I first moved in was because it's quite a bare flat like before all the furniture obviously it's just plain white walls wooden floors and I was like okay I love gaming so let me print out my favorite games and frame yeah. them mm -hmm. so people were like where did you get them from and I was like I just literally made it in photoshop printed it out and got them framed so I have the Tomb Raider 2 which we saw the poster yeah. mm -hmm. above my 
TV and then I have the GTA San Andreas, The Sims, which was above my yeah, computer. Because I, I, when I look at that photo of The Sims and most of the time I'm sat there working and I'm just kind of staring at the computer screen and then a wall and I look up and I'll see the poster of The Sims and I get really excited because I love, that's one of my yeah. favorite games, so I love it. Um, and then in my bedroom, I have the Final Fantasy VII poster, which is my favorite game of all time. So above my bed, I have this Final Fantasy VII Brilliant. poster, which is really geeky of me, but... I love it. No, I, what I love as well is that you've done it all yourself. So like you've built the computer yeah. yourself, you've printed stuff. Because like, people would probably pay thousands and thousands of pounds for like big, like, you know, signed posters. But you're like, no, I'm just going to print it out myself and I'm going to have yeah. it here. I love that. My whole thing is no matter how successful I get in life, I don't, I want a good deal. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but you say what you're quite thrifty deal? then. With yeah. Like, yeah, are you? Definitely. I love that. And I'm like, I'll just rather do it myself. I yeah. quite yeah. like the challenge of like learning new things and doing things myself. Mm -hmm. Would you ever make your own game? Oh, wow. Mm. That's a good question. That is a good yeah. question. I, I think I would, mm -hmm. but I don't know how, I don't know what kind of, I would be really ambitious with it. Yeah, yeah, would, yeah. It wouldn't be, be like a mobile app. No. Do you remember when Kim Kardashian had, well, I think she still has it. Yeah. I used to play it. It would. <laughs> <laughs> It was, quite good. it was actually quite good. <laughs> but I feel like I would be really ambitious and mm. probably want to make this massive, yeah. really high graphics yeah. game. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely would. I'm sure someone will approach you someday and you can pitch all of these concepts and they'll say, well, we can afford Candy Crush. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what first got you into gaming? What was that moment in childhood? So I, was, I think I was about eight or nine and my auntie, she went, she went traveling. So she basically just upped and left and left all of her stuff with us. Um, and one of them was a PlayStation 1. It was sort of the late 90s, I guess. So mm -hmm. like 98, 99. And she left it. I'd ne we'd never played before, me and my sister. So my sister's four years older than me. So she started playing it because she kind of just had more of an awareness how yeah. to work mm -hmm. it. And I just used to sit and watch her. So she was playing Final Fantasy VII, which is my favorite game still. Tomb Raider, all of these games. And we just became obsessed with it. And then Good. that was around the same time where Pokemon was coming out. So yeah. there was the, the Game Boy Color, mm -hmm. you know, Pokemon Red and Blue. So we both got those. And me and my sister both fell in love with gaming. And we spent most of our childhood and teenage years gaming, much to, to the despair of my mum, who was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's the summer holidays. Do you want to go on holiday? Or we, and we would just prefer no. to sit inside and game. <laughs> Do you think yeah. that inspired, because you're saying you did um, your course in computing. Mm -hmm. Do you think that inspired you to go down that route into the computer, like studying like computing and, and the kind of career path that you went down originally? Yeah, I think so. I think I've always just been, you know, when you naturally just pick something up and you can't really explain why. Yeah. Mm. With IT and tech and things like that, I was just always found it very easy to pick up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's kind of just the direction that I went in. And I always naturally found myself in these environments where it was typically male dominated. So mm -hmm. gaming when I was really young, I used to, well, I tried playing football when I was about eight or nine as well. And none of the boys would pass to me. So I would get annoyed Classic. and I'd, start, I'd pinch them. So I'd go around and start <laughs> pinching them. <laughs> <laughs> on the pitch because I'm like what just because I'm a girl you're not going to pass to me yeah. so I get really angry I pinched yeah. them and then yeah. I got sent off and then I think that was the end of my football career <laughs> <laughs> but there was something in me and I still have it now that I really thrive in those environments mm. because I don't like being prejudged like yeah. Yeah. even though I'm a girl what I'll still beat you in a racing game they used to get yeah. so annoyed year five there was a racing game on our computers you know in school you had yeah, sort yeah. of those computers they had one game on them this racing game and I remember I came first and they were all so annoyed at me I love like, that my soul. How are you beating us? And I'm like, so? I love so that. You. <laughs> totally exceeding their expectations. Yeah. I'm so here for that. If you could have like the ultimate three like celebrity guests to come around and either come around to your flat for whether it's a gaming session or like for dinner, who would be like the top three celebs you'd want? Oh, I would say Cardi B. I think she'd be great. Yeah, Cardi B, great. yeah. She'd What's be she be such playing? good entertainment, wouldn't she? She would. Yeah. I think she's quite competitive as well. Great. Yeah. Great. So I definitely would invite her around. What game are you getting out for Cardi B? <laughs> What game am I getting out for Cardi B? Mm. I like this game. Mm. Yeah. I feel like you can match personalities with a with I, a game selection. Yeah, it would have to be something compared. Oh, it would be Dance Mat. Do you remember back in the yeah, day? Right. Dance Mat. Yes. That's the one that I loved. Mm. Yeah. Me and Cardi B on a Dance Mat. That'd be Perfect. so good. Perfect. That would be great. Okay. Who else? I feel like a comedian. Mo the Comedian would be good. Yeah, he'd be fun. He'd be lovely. Yeah. I think, I don't know if he games or not, but if he does. Mm -hmm. He'd supply the jokes though. So even if yeah. he was rubbish, he would like make it even funnier. Like, mm -hmm. and as, with you being very competitive, I feel like he'd like love that element to you, just like using that as an excuse to take the piss out of you basically. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. And then the final guest, 
who oh Doja Cat I love yes, her. Yes, brilliant. Love her. And she seems very fun as well. I think I've just gone for guests that are going to be good. I was going to say, good laugh. Yeah. like yeah. guests who have a lot of energy yeah. and big personalities. Mm-hmm. That's going to be like a noisy, like gaming session. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what with me is? I'm not even a loud person, but I like being surrounded by people that yeah, are very yeah. energetic and loud. So I think you've probably broken down barriers as a woman within gaming, but where do you think your your passion for furthering yourself as a woman within gaming comes from? I think the main thing is when I was younger, I loved gaming Mm. or anything I was into really. And I would tell people my interests and then get a reaction sort of along the lines of, oh, you're you're a girl, why do you game? Like you should, yeah. Um, Or when I used to work in IT or in my computing degree, I would tell people that, what do you do? And I was like, oh, I work for an IT company, do project management Mm -hmm. or my degrees in programming, I can program. They're like, oh, you don't look like you'd be into that. You don't look like you should be doing that. You should be doing something else. So when I when you get that reaction, you kind of just go quiet. And mm-hmm. I just stop telling people what I like because I'm like, why do I have to justify yeah. my interest mm-hmm. to anyone else? Um, so when I quit my job and I was thinking of what really interests me in life and what drives me, it was more just being, and I would never say a role model or an inspiration, but just being someone that a young girl who just wants to enjoy what they enjoy can look up to and think okay she doesn't fit into a box she really loves gaming I love gaming Mm. but she's also really into music and fashion Mm. and she likes dressing up and putting makeup on and I think it was the main thing for me was just breaking that stereotype down of what a gamer is or what a, a girl could be and just celebrating your interests. So you left full-time corporate job to become a full-time YouTuber. Mm. Was that an easy decision to make? And like, how, was it been something you've been stewing on for a while? Or like, how easy was that decision? I think it was a hard decision for me because I'd worked really hard to get that job. It was a very good job. I had a really, I'd got a really good degree. And I think until that point in my life, I'd always followed, I always called it the life plan. Mm. And so at school, we were told, okay, you'll go to school, you do your GCSEs, you do your UA levels and you go to uni and then you get nine to five. And that was the the set path. And I don't know if anyone else had a different experience, but at my school, they, it was like, you get your A levels or you fail at life. And we didn't have, they weren't taught anything else. And I, I like the fact that now I think it's starting to change because had I've known that I probably would have done something more entrepreneurial when I was young, but I don't regret anything that I have done. So uh, yeah, I, I, I graduated and went to do the nine to five. And even when I was at university, I would call my mum up and say, I, this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm. Like, I am I can do it and I'm good at it, but I don't enjoy it. And I feel like there is something else that I have to give, but I don't know what that mm. was. Yeah. So I basically, six months before I quit my job, I started saving because I live in London and it's expensive. So I was saving and then one day I was like, right, I've never done anything. I've never taken risks. I'm not a very spontaneous person. And I was like, I just need to do this. I I was 26 at the time. I was like, I need to do this now. Otherwise I feel like I'm never going to do it. So I just handed my notice in and then told my parents and they were very stressed about it, especially my dad, because they have obviously worked hard in their life to put me in a good position so that I can like pay my bills and things like that. Um, So that was an awkward time period, I think, as well, just because I didn't have something lined up. It's like you've quit your job. Most of the time when you quit your job, you just you've got something else to go to another job or at least an idea. I literally had no idea. And I think around that time I'd been picked up to work on radio. So Rinse FM, which is in East London. I got found on Instagram just talking on, a, on my stories Wishing. and uh, the, the, the founder of Rinse just found me and was like, you're quite funny when you talk. Great. Come in for a meeting and I was like, oh, I've never done presenting before. Like, <laughs> Had you spoken about music on your socials or things like that? Or? Um, not intentionally, probably no. just posted music maybe sometimes. Mm. So I was like, okay, I'll just start doing that. So <laughs> I quit my job. I started doing the radio show. And then it took me about four or five months to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And then I just had a light bulb moment after three months of just it was actually a really hard time for me because you go from working in an office um, and being judged based on your academic ability or just like how hard you work to if you're online, you get judged by the way you look or how many likes you get and Mm. how Mm. interesting your life looks. Mm -hmm. And I really struggled with that transition because I was like, I have a lot more to me than a photo on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how can I 
express myself and let people know more about my personality. And then I was like, gaming, I've always loved gaming. Yeah. Yeah. It's something that's made me different. And I used to view it as something negative because people were like, you, as I said, like you, you don't look like you do gaming, things like that. But I'm like, why don't I flip it yeah. and use that to my advantage? Yeah. So that's when I, I came up with the idea of YouTube. Wow. I had to learn how to edit. I had no idea how YouTube works at all. So I kind of just taught myself everything. And then a few months later, I started my YouTube channel. Wow. And then one of your early videos with KSI got something like 2 million views. Yeah. Was that a real turning point in your YouTube career? Definitely. So I did that the collaboration, um, because I'd lived in London for a few years at this time. So I had mutual friends with with KSI. Okay. So I kind of mm-hmm. just called in a massive favor. And that's something that I will always give him credit for because he really helps up and coming creators. Mm. Does so, he? And he didn't have to do that. I had probably about 3000 subscribers on my, which is still a lot considering yeah. I've just started YouTube. But yeah, so we did the video and he, he was like, what games do you want to play? And I, I could have gone FIFA or Call mm-hmm. of Duty, sort of the mm-hmm. typical ones that people play on YouTube. But I was like, no, I love The Sims. So Great. you're going to come on my channel and we're going to play The Sims. And yeah, the video was up for a few weeks. It done good numbers for my channel. And then suddenly, I don't know how, it's just what I love about YouTube. It just got picked up on an algorithm Amazing. and went to a million followers within <laughs> no, a million uh, views within a few weeks. How prepared were you for, because obviously that, that video went viral, how prepared were you, because you said you'd only just learned the editing, you'd just started the channel, did you have like videos ready and waiting to go, so then once you've got that audience and they're there waiting for your next thing, do you have that ready, or was it like panic stations, like, <laughs> I've got to come up with content now? Yeah, I felt that, yeah. Yeah. I think, and also I, I'm, I don't like to plan too far into the future, so I've never really had videos ready to go. So when that happened, I sort of started reacting to it, and then I learned the good thing about YouTube is if something does go viral, like that was the first video on my channel that went viral. And then just before lockdown, I did this video with the Sidemen. Um, and this one moment went viral because this guy, Stephen, told me I had a pancake ass. And it literally went viral. It still is going viral on TikTok till this day. <laughs> and that that happened, but that, that brought a load of traffic to all of my social media. So okay. I was like, okay. I need to just start putting videos out. Yeah. And that's one thing I give myself credit for is I'll make the most of a moment. So mm-hmm. that was a really good moment for me. And then that just happened to fall into when lockdown started and everyone was at home. They were gaming. Yeah. yeah. So then I was like, okay, this is my focus is YouTube. And then a few months later, that's when I hit 100,000 subscribers. And I think it was down to that sort of keeping the momentum and Mm -hmm. making the most of it. I feel like you've overcome quite a lot of challenges within like like parts of your career and whatnot. Would you say, is there one standout moment for you that you're most proud of, like a particular challenge maybe that you've overcome or a way that you feel like you've really made an impact where you really expected it? I think there's a couple. One of them is more personal and uh, it was five months five or six months into starting YouTube. And I got invited to go to LA for this big gaming festival called wow. E3 with Xbox. And I am terrified of flying. I ha- I haven't, no. like, I don't, I still don't enjoy it, but now I'm kind of, I, I'm one of those people that forces myself to do something if mm-hmm. I'm scared, because mm-hmm. I think that if I said no, then I'd just limit myself. Yeah. So I agreed. And obviously LA is an 11 hour flight and it's probably the longest flight that I'd done. Yeah. And for me, just going and I, I remember the day I arrived and I took a, um, a photo and put it on Instagram outside of the Staples Center in LA. And it was so nice because all my followers have followed me on that journey of me yeah. literally having a breakdown for the whole month. I went to therapy to try and get hypnosis and everything to try and just get myself on the plane. And when I posted that, everyone was so nice. So that was a really big moment for me of just like, yeah, I didn't let it hold me back and going to LA and having that whole experience really helped sort of my profile. So Mm -hmm. that's for me on a a personal level, that was like a a milestone, I guess. Um, Just, I think those hitting a hundred thousand subscribers and you get the plaque and that's yeah. like, a, it's an actual physical I think it's great thing. that they do that because it's really yeah. encouraging, isn't it? And it's yeah. also, I think it shows to you as a YouTuber that they, they, they've acknowledged you and your hard work because mm-hmm. it, it isn't easy at all. It's a lot of hours, like you say, editing, learning the skill set of having to film, the right lighting, then playing the games and filming stuff, doing the commentary or whatnot. It's, it's a full-time job, yeah. isn't it? Definitely. You've got to be able to sort of basically own a production company to do all of these different things that you're also starring in. You're a one-man band. Yeah. 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 And there are hard days where you have to be in front of the camera and you're tired or you Mm. you know when you have an off day and you guys probably know this because you present as well you're just having an off day and you can't just 
you can't focus or get any lines out and you just keep messing up. And then before that, you've had to set all the lighting up and plan yeah. the video and make sure you've clicked record and everything. <laughs> That's yeah. all working out. And there are some days where you forget to do one of those things and it yeah. just ruins the whole thing. But those days, they, I think it all comes into a package and you get rewarded at the end of it. Why the name Elle's the Witch? Mm. Okay, so when I was at, when I was at high school... I was moody. Well, I still get moody now. My thing is, like, I get moody at things. Don't we all? But they're only small things, and I always complain. So when people are like, don't be so negative, I'm like, that is my personality, <laughs> so I can't do anything about that. But when I was at school, my friends didn't want to call me the B word. So they were like, ah. instead of being like, oh, don't be a... They would be like, don't be a witch today. Like, you're being a proper witch. That's kind of nice, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, and yeah. then they'd be like, oh, did you bring your broomstick with you and things like that. So I was like, okay. When I was thinking of um, names to do on social media, because yeah. mm-hmm. I'm quite like private, I guess, with like my actual full name and things yeah. like that. I was like, okay, I'll just flip this and I'll be Elle's the Make Witch it. now. Yeah. yeah, embrace it. And do you think it's helped to sort of have a bit of branding that comes along with you? Yeah, definitely. Because yeah. it makes you, people will remember you because like, well, why is your name Elle's the Witch? And little things like where I live now and I get packages and the concierge are always like, who is Elle's the Witch? <laughs> 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 they're like are you a real witch no just, just literally just a nickname but you know I, I like it and it, it when I was when I started gaming in particular it was good for branding because mm. I got a little cartoon made she had a witch's Great. hat on so it's good in that sense however I do find that now I've gone more into presenting and you, I think with especially with football it's quite a serious sport like yeah. they're just serious <laughs> so I was like okay well, maybe I'll just drop the witch for that so now I'm just L's oh, when yeah. I do when I do yeah. presenting I'm L's and when I do content creation and YouTube I'm L's the witch your gaming career has now led into you presenting on TV I mean you've always done the radio mm-hmm. but you are fronting football TV as Man City fan were you always into football I I've always been transparent I've never up until sort of three years ago I didn't know too much about football okay mm-hmm. but I've always as I said earlier like I was doing football training for a while and then I stopped because I was pinching everyone <laughs> <laughs> I love that that's the reason why you had to stop because you were getting violent <laughs> heavy violent. injustice yeah. I like that but my dad's or my dad's a massive football fan and he used to take me to I'm from Norwich originally mm-hmm. so they're my mum and dad are both season ticket holders so my dad used to take me to the Norwich games and then I stopped getting invited because I would stand up when the opposition scored. I remember once they were playing Crystal Palace and Crystal Palace scored and I stood up and started cheering. And my dad was so angry because we're in the Norwich stand and we're right next to the reporters as well. Um, So yeah, I've always been brought up around sport and I'm naturally quite an athletic person. Right. So when I... um, when I first, it was probably within the first six months of starting YouTube, I got invited to a FIFA tournament, which is esports, and it was the FIFA E World Cup. And they asked me to do 60 seconds presenting on stage, and I'd never done on stage before at all. Bearing in mind, this is O2 Arena on Sky Sports. I had an in ear. So when yeah. you have an in ear, that's basically people, Screwing producers me. talking to you whilst you're mm-hmm. also trying to talk. Yeah. Um, so, my manager was like, you could say no because you have no experience or you could just pretend like you know what you're doing and just go for it. And he's like, and I know you can do it. So I was like, okay, no, I can't say no to things. I do stuff that scares me. So I did that. It went fine. And I was so nervous the whole time, but it actually went really well. And then there was someone um, in the audience who worked for the production company for the Premier League who was starting a new YouTube series. And then a few days later, I got an email saying, we're, we've got this series, we're just casting for the presenters. We'd love you to come in for a screen test. Amazing. Wow. And then I'm there freaking out because I was saying to my manager, like, <laughs> I don't know enough about football. I don't know anything. So I, would, I did that thing, you know, before an exam where you yeah. cram loads of revision yeah. in two days. So I did that. When for the, the the green screen, I'd love to see that tape now because I'm sure I was just making things up on the spot. <laughs> well, actually, we've got it right here. No, oh. we don't. <laughs> <laughs> God, I literally was like, going to expose me. Um, I'd love to know what they thought, but I think they hired me because of my personality, I guess. And yeah, so I, I got the job from that and it's really just gone from there and it's gone so quickly. Like if you asked me two and a half years ago, if you thought I'd be working on match of the day x on bbc or yeah. for the premier league or for doing the full-time rap at the man city when they win the league Amazing. Wow. in a stadium full of screaming people like i would never 
I have believed you, but mm -hmm. I think it's more just, I, I work really hard. I've fallen in love with the sport completely. Um, and yeah. now I was, I'll just sit down and watch old games to try and catch up on all my knowledge. So. <laughs> oh, I wow. love that. And you yeah. went to uni in Manchester as well, I did. Right? Yeah, so, so did that's why I support Man City. Because right. a lot right. of people like, you're from Norwich and you live in London. <laughs> why do you support <laughs> Man City? But my area in Manchester was South East Manchester and mm -hmm. it was all Man City supporters. Great. So I, Great. I, I adopted the team. You mm. just mentioned the big Premier League win there. Like mm. you obviously have all the backstage like gossip and get. <laughs> <laughs> firsthand what was that like that moment it was incredible so I was I was downstairs in the uh, control room which is basically where they have all the screens of all of the camera angles and they were briefing me because for Man City we have a show called Match Day Live which goes live on all of their social medias and their app and it's basically the hour beforehand and the hour after so kind of punditry what you would see on Great. BBC or Sky and they were like okay today's your first time hosting it so I was leading the discussion with three other people so I was downstairs being briefed of when we announced we're champions and meanwhile we're so two that was your first day yeah it wasn't my first day at Man City no, it was but my just first like day actually... being the lead host wow yeah. and they were briefing me so like so when we're champions and at this point we're 2 nil we're losing 2-0 to Aston Villa yeah. mm -hmm. and it's not looking good and they're briefing me and I'm thinking oh god and I was really stressed I was like I want to go home I feel sick because we were losing I was like this is so embarrassing <laughs> then we came back and scored three goals so but where the studio was compared to the control room was like three flights of stairs I had to run halfway around the stadium so we scored the second goal and I'm like can I go upstairs now because I didn't want to miss the atmosphere mm -hmm. yeah. so I legged it up these stairs I'm so out of breath just as we score the third goal I get out into the arena and everyone's just like jumping wow. Wow. It was insane. And then we had to go straight onto a live show and you can't hear anything because the studio is in the stadium. So there's not soundproofed or anything. It's just, so I've gotten in here. They're talking to me. I can't hear can't anything. Hear anything. Mm -hmm. So we did, we were live for an hour and a half and we just, I had to make the whole thing up. <laughs> I do need to ask you, because you posted years ago about wanting to go to the Brits and then finally you got mm. to be a part of it. Is that another milestone moment for you? Like, how was that? Oh, it was the best because I... I love music. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when I was growing up, I just remember all the Brits' performance. I remember Eminem performing at the Brits years ago. Britney, yeah. the, the Spice Girls, everyone. So one of the things I always wanted to do was go to the Brit Awards. Mm -hmm. So I went this year and it was amazing. Who did and you see? We, who was performing? So KSI performed, Ed Sheeran, mm -hmm. um, Anne-Marie, Adele performed yeah. as well. Wow. But the, it was so funny because we're... I was sat with Big Zoo. We worked together on Kiss and they put us on a table and it was literally behind Maya Jammer where she was doing all of her segments. Yes. So Mo the Comedian throws Maya The little Maya bar Jammer. set up yeah. she had. And I, every, every, my phone kept going off and I was like, what's going on? And I could see us on the projector behind Maya and I check in my phone and so many of my friends are like, you're on ITV, like you're on ITV. <laughs> so the first time I was like, okay, cool. They'll move to somewhere else now. Mm -hmm. No, basically the entire show, <laughs> it was Maya or Mo and then yeah. me just in the background like pretending to drink my champagne and Maya, Mo and Bissette. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of pressure. You've got to make yeah. sure that you're on your best behaviour. Is exactly. that weird thing? Is all like being suddenly conscious of like if someone tells you to walk on camera and then you're mm. like, how do I walk again? <laughs> yeah, it's like you just know you're there and everyone can see like, how do I drink a you're glass of champagne mouth and again without yeah. anyone? Like this is so weird. <laughs> yeah. Would you love to go again? Would that be like a broadcasting thing that you'd love to be part of? Yeah, I feel maybe that the red carpet or something beforehand. I mm. think would be amazing just to meet all the artists and. I just love, I've always loved music award shows. Yeah. yeah. So you've said you had a lifetime dream of going to the Brits and then you got to go to the Brits. Is there anything you're manifesting this year for, oh, uh, this for year. where you want to go? Um, I, I really wanted to go to Tokyo, but I just feel like it's a myth still. But they have this Nintendo world. They've made a world. I know. And it's basically like Mario, Mario's home or the whole castle and everything they've just opened it but they're building one in florida as well yeah. have and you everyone, seen this everyone no, keeps sending me the videos it's amazing so it's part of universal studios mm -hmm. and it's got like a you can like ride on mario kart and you've got these ar goggles and stuff you go around and you go to, you can go to like there's a restaurant um the mushroom yeah. code yeah and you can go and eat and they've got like mushroom burgers and oh my stuff. gosh so a bit like the harry potter world but for like mario. 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 yeah, yeah. That's so and cool. they've got all these like moving like coins and it's amazing yeah it's crazy so that was my goal so the tokyo yeah. one's open but the florida one's still to open the florida one's being built at the moment so mm -hmm. people on my instagram are very supportive of my dreams to go here and they're building <laughs> one in la as well which is going to open before the florida one Okay, well, I'll be in yeah, LA. Soon sorry, I know all about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we're going to uh, challenge you now as we're talking about games. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And you've just mentioned a few friends that you've worked with within the industry. Uh, we're going to put you on the spot of a would you rather. Mm. Okay. Oh, gosh. Okay. Here, okay. Kick us yeah, off? first one. Would you rather play Grand Theft Auto with Amelia de Moldenberg or FIFA with Jack Grealish? 
Oh, that's a hard one. Mm. Do you know what? I'll say Amelia because I've not done a video with her yet. And I've no. interviewed Jack ah. twice now. And I feel like she'd be very funny to play with. Yeah. And I love Grand Theft Auto. Great. Yeah. Okay. Okay, would you like to replay The Sims with KSI or have a kickoff with Cooking Ma have a kickoff with Cooking Mama with Big Zoo? <gasps> Big Zoo, I think. Yeah. I love Cooking Mama and I haven't played it for years. It is, so it? for me, yeah, yeah, definitely that. And I feel like I've I've also not done a video of Big Zoo, so you I think he'd be hilarious. Amazing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh take on Mason Mount in a game of Mario Kart or go up against H on Call of Duty. Ooh. We're that's not making this easy one. for you, are we? You're not, no. It's, these are tough questions. Yeah. I'm going to go with Mason Mount and mm. Mario Kart because yeah. I think that I at least have a chance of winning. <laughs> yeah. And if I was playing Call of Duty against H, I would lose. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> <Definitely> lose. <laughs> what console are we playing Mario Kart on here? Nintendo 64. Okay, great. The classic one, yeah. of, obviously. Uh, and final challenge, Final Fantasy with AJ Tracy are having a singing battle on Sing Star with Maya Jama. <gasps> that's the hardest one. Is it? <laughs> Yeah, because we I love Final Fantasy and me and AJ are really good friends. Mm. Yeah. So that would be fun anyway. But it's gotta be singing with Maya. Yeah. Mm. I think we'd be really competitive, me I and I was gonna say, who well. do you think would win? Because you've mentioned that you're competitive. Yeah. I think I don't know, but I've seen her do uh, like the live performances on Mo's show yeah. and stuff. I I don't know who would win, but I think that would be fun. Definitely that yeah. one. What's your go-to sing star track? Oh, I can't remember what they've got on SingStar, but I know my karaoke song, yeah, which on. is Tony Braxton, Unbreak My Heart, which is very ambitious. That is tough. <laughs> and you just end up screaming, but, you know, it's one of my favourites. Yeah. Out of all of those um, that we've just mentioned, who are you most, what's the, the main, like, the ideal situation? Mm. Is it Singing Star with Maya, Mario Kart with Mason Mount, you chose Big Zoo for Cooking Mama, or uh, Grand Theft Auto with Amelia, which one out of all of them would you say top moment? I think Maya singing. Yeah. I think it would Great. just be the most fun for me because... I haven't played, I haven't done a sing star for ages or anything like that. And I think we both make it really fun. Yeah. I think there's a show in this. You and Maya getting different celebs on doing some sort of sing star shenanigans. Yeah. Please do. <laughs> also, I feel like we should incorporate Guitar Hero into it because oh, I'm very yeah. good. Great. I used to love Great. Guitar Hero. I used to love it's Guitar so Hero. It's so hard though. It's rubbish at it. Well, uh, so it depends when, what song. Mm. Yeah, I think, you know, um, this is so bad and obviously study for your GCSEs. But when I was, you know, when you get study leave for yeah. GCSEs, mm. yeah. right? I was, oh, I've got two weeks off. What am I going to do? Obviously not revise. Hero. So what? I took it upon myself to get better than my sister at Guitar Hero because mm -hmm. she was on expert or difficult level. I literally spent two weeks just playing Guitar Hero and I ran downstairs. I was like, mom, I got 100%. She, she thought I got 100% in my GCSE. <laughs> so she was so happy because she's a teacher. She was like, oh my God, congratulations. What, what, which subject? And I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, it's Guitar Hero. And she was just like, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's what I've been doing for the past two weeks in my room. Well, looking at your career now, time well spent, to be honest yes. with you. Exactly. That yeah. was revision exactly. for, for me doing youtube yeah <laughs> now um we ask our guests to bring in something that means something to them from their home and i think you brought in something for us today. i have to i've brought a few things actually oh wow mm -hmm. uh, well let me just get them down here so i brought uh, memorabilia from my nintendo 64 because as i said we even saw it on my home tour but i have my nintendo 64 so i brought the controller first which is classic um these are really comfy to hold as well, but if you look at them now, they're so like plasticky and just Yeah, they look a bit old. space age. But if you feel like this is an iconic sort of yeah. gaming mm. thing. I recognise that as a like a gaming... Like, What's the middle yeah. bit for? Is that just for comfort? I don't really understand. So the way you don't hold... So normally on console, you hold here and here, right? Yeah. But with a Nintendo, you hold it here ah. and you do the joystick. Ah. So you don't actually... I don't know what the point of that part was. Right. But yeah, you just hold it here. And you'll press control it here and press these ones. Nice. Do you often go back to the Nintendo 64? Yeah, I love it. The only thing is it does not work well on my big TV because oh. it's not optimized for that and it gives you motion sickness. So oh. you have to play it on a small monitor. <laughs> a small monitor. But it's kind of like my party trick. People are like, oh, do you really like gaming? I'm like, yeah, I've literally got Nintendo 64. <laughs> but also I bought my games. Okay, so. great. What have we got? Are I these have, like top... Three, so like these are the, the these ultimate. are just sort of the classic ones that I would pull for on the Nintendo. Okay. How many games have you got in total on your Nintendo sixty four? Uh, probably like ten. I don't have many okay. for Nintendo. Okay. I don't think they had too many yeah, either. Yeah. But uh, I can't even tell you how many games I have for the PlayStation Two. I've got so many. So the first game is Mario sixty four, which is Mario Kart. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this one is probably the first racing game I played. I think, Amazing. and I think this is. You have there's so many Mario Karts. I think there's about eight games now, but this is the OG. This is, is the it? original one, Great. and this is the one I'm good at. So I'll, <laughs> I'll that All one. The, the second one, 
I think any gamer knows GoldenEye on yeah. the Nintendo 64 is one of the classic games. Mm -hmm. um, there was a cheat code. There was this one gun and I can't remember the name, but if you shot someone once, they'd just die. And it was that was like the cheat code on the game. So that if you're playing against your friend, you, you found the gun. Um, but yeah, GoldenEye. And this one's normally in my console. Mm -hmm. So if I ever put a photo, if I'm watching TV, I'll put a photo on Twitter and maybe like, I'm watching this football game. Yeah. But, oh my God, is that GoldenEye in your Nintendo 64? I'm like, yeah. And then I feel really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then this last one is, this is in my top three games of all time. So my top three games are Final Fantasy VII, GTA San Andreas, and then this one, which is Zel Zelda, Zelda mm. and the Ocarina of Time. This was one of the first games I played on the Nintendo 64, and I love RPGs. So this one is a role play game. And I think it just changed sort of the the capabilities of what you could do with a role play game. So Zelda and you could play, you had your ocarina is kind of like a recorder and you put it, yeah. it's like mm -hmm. a xylophone type yeah. thing. And you had all these songs that you can play. And I still even remember like the codes to play the songs. Go on, give us some codes. Do any of them ever stop working? Because <laughs> obviously the Nintendo 64 is, is an old console now. Do you ever, have you ever had a moment where one of your favorite games has just stopped working? No, but the classic thing to do with those old ones, if you get dust, you go... <sighs> Because ah, like, I, yeah. I saw something online that was like, you shouldn't do that because it'll like corrode them or something. Well, that was the thing everyone did. Like even mm. with Game Boy. So if you put it in and it's got dust in it and you press on it, so yeah. you, the screen will come on and it's all like the text is yeah, distorted. Yeah. So you have to take it out and you go, and then you put it back in and it, it works, does a trick. There you go. It's like magic. It is like magic. <laughs> so those are my things. I think for me, I really love nostalgic gaming and it just reminds me of being young and just happy. So yeah. yeah. So we're coming round, final few questions for you. We're coming round, have you got any house rules? Have we got to kick off our shoes? Are we like, is there a certain chair we're not allowed to sit on? Are we allowed to help ourselves to stuff in the kitchen? I, I'm a really bad host. So my thing is like, just come in and treat it like your own home. Because okay. I, I will offer like a drink, like, do you want a drink? Like, I'll get, but I, I just never prepare for people coming around. Yeah. So I'm like, come in, there's a fridge there, like go in the cupboards. If you want something to eat, just go and get Have it yourself yeah. type thing. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say I have rules. I'm kind of just like, come in. You yeah. can even wear your shoes. Cause <laughs> it's like a small flat anyway. Um, but yeah, my main thing is just, I want people to just feel at home yeah. mm -hmm. and just do what they would normally do in their own house. So. And what is it that home really means to you? Oh, my, my home is like an escape. It's like a little bubble where no one can get to me. I think that's my main thing. It's like when I get when I get in the door, I'm just like literally like not strip, but I will yeah. because my flat is hot most of the time anyway because it's all glass. So I'll get in and I'll literally just like lie down and just decompress because I think when you do a job that requires you to like be yourself and be on camera, mm -hmm. it takes a lot out of you. Mm -hmm. You come home from a day of doing presenting or just being a personality, I guess. And you're just like, I just want to sit in silence. And yeah. just like, mm -hmm. so yeah. for me, it's just like a quiet place where I can go and chill out and game and yeah. listen to music. Yeah. Wicked. Well, thank you so much. It's been amazing to hear all about your home and, and everything else in between. So thank Thanks you for, for having on. me. Enjoy Very inspiring, it. I have to say. Thank you. And where can people find you on socials? Um, it's literally at Els the Witch Perfect. everywhere. Very okay. easy. You easy. talked about it um, earlier, having that brand. It's yeah. so perfect. No other Els the Witches around. There isn't. I think no. I've, someone stole my Reddit name, but what? Oh. I know I'm very upset about it. That's no, not okay. But yeah, Els the Witch and everything. Great. Well, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you.